People look at stories through different lenses. I have my own personal take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of In Case You Missed It on Sportsmax.tv. I'm pleased to be joined by Reggae Boy and Philadelphia Union defender Damien Liu. Damien, welcome to In Case You Missed It. How are things? Thank you. I um, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, things are good so far. Um, back to the cold Oh. Philadelphia winter, you know, unfortunately, but it's good so far, yeah. Yeah, I would never do well in the cool, even in the air conditioning <laughs> at the office. I'm like, oh, take it off, take it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get to business now. Can you assess the 2 all draw against Mexico at the Azteca in the CONCACAF Nations League? Um, yeah, I think it's bittersweet, you know, it's a tournament that maybe a lot of people won't even realize that, hey, if we had won that game, we would have went to the final round of the Nations League, which is the semifinals. But also, you know, if you look at the history and the results that we've had in the past in the Azteca, this was a good one. Um, the performance was good. I think we could have won the game. We should have won the game, but this is football for you. Sometimes the results don't go your way. Um, I'm happy with how the guys really went there and, and, and fought hard and tried to follow the, the, the game plan as much as possible. But, but for me, personally, uh, it wasn't a success because of how much we wanted to advance to the, to, to the final round to put yourself in a position to win the trophy. But again, it was an okay result um, on the road. Yeah, and you said it yourself, it's unfortunate that the reggae boys missed out on the CONCACAF Nations League semis. But what are some of the positives that you've been seeing from this crop of players? Um, the togetherness, you know, um, the guys' willingness, the willingness to, to, to listen to the coach, work with the coach, um, to work for each other, to say, listen, you know, we, want, we know what's on the line. We want to be a great nation. We want to be a powerhouse in CONCACAF and in the world. And we have the players to do it. We have the players to get us to multiple World Cups. We have um, a good coaching staff that's that's bringing their experience from being in the World Cup and um, in the Euros to, 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 to a small country like Jamaica that have uh, been to the World Cup once. So, um, also, just to be honest, um, I have to give you know, credit to also the JFF, you know, like they're making efforts to putting things into place and let us being able to only focus on football and not off the field issues and stuff like that. So I think, you know, I can give them a thumbs up for this mood um, going on this camp. I hope they can um, build, build on this. Um, but yeah, I think also the younger players, they, they've come in. They've they want to, to, to work hard to get a starting spot and they're learning from the, the guys ahead of them. The local players, they're also coming in, they're working hard, you know, um, inexperienced, but with these trips, you know, they get they can grasp grasp so much and I think they've they've been really They've been basically like a sponge, you know, they've been taking in all the, the good stuff and, you know, listening to, to, to their elders and the, the players ahead of them and the coaches and I'm happy with the way the camp was going, for sure. Right, and it's always good to hear the JFF being spoken about in a positive manner, so that's good. Um, you also mentioned the coaching staff. Uh, let's talk a bit about head coach Jaime Hall Grimson. Um, when he was speaking about the tool draw with Mexico, he said the reggae boys were unlucky as, you know, you had the better chances. How has it been, the experience working under coach Hall Grimson? Um, it's good. I've, you know, I've played in Scandinavia for for a number of years, so I'm familiar with his um, playing style and you know his um, his way of thinking, his thought process. So for me, it's easily um, adaptable. It's easy to work with him. I'm normally a player that every coach um, wants to work with and get along with well. So there's no issues there. 
um, he's brought in a philosophy that, listen, hey, underdogs can be great also. You know, you don't have to always go, in, go into a game being the number one seed. But at the end of the 90 minutes, make sure you're on top. That um, no-nonsense mentality, that willingness to learn, um, the willingness to do the basic stuff first before, you know, we, we, we go outside the box. Um, the willingness of buying into a system, the commitment, you know, the mentality of a brotherhood, of, you know, putting egos aside. Like, he's just a guy that has his way of going and, and being a professional and being a national team and how he wants the infra infrastructure and how he wants the organization to run. And I think it's working. I think the, the players have bought into it. The players have seen results. Obviously, we're starting starting from scratch, so he's going to do the basic stuff first. And the players, of course, we all sometimes don't want to do walkthroughs. We don't want to do set plays. We don't want to do the basic stuff, um, technique, um, technical training, because we're full-time pros. So we've been through that already. But yeah. once when, you, when you're starting something good and building a foundation, you have to start from scratch. You have to start from the basics. So everyone is on the same page, and he's been doing a really good job his staff his technical staff uh, have been helping the players you know doing idps which is individual individual practicing and stuff like that and it's been good yeah well that's also really good to hear now for finishing second the reggae boys have booked their ticket to the congo cup gold cup tournament that's um june this year this will be jamaica's 13th appearance at the gold cup you were runners up in the 2015 and 2017 editions and it's Jamaica's fifth consecutive Gold Cup. Can this be the year, Damien, that you walk away with the trophy? It has to be the year, to be honest. <clears throat> That's one of my personal um, aspirations, is to lift the Gold Cup. You know, I've been to the finals, I've been to the semi-finals, I've been to the quarter-finals. I think, hey, <laughs> why not just win it all, you know? For me, again, I wanted to be champions of the Nations League and champions of the Gold Cup. Unfortunately, the Nations League, you know, is behind us now. So the Gold Cup is the bigger picture right now. Um, I think we can win it all. I think we have to, from if you analyze the Mexico game and also even some parts of the Argentina game, um, you can see that we have really good players that can cause damage. Yeah. You just have to stick to the system, work hard, create an identity and um <clears throat> yeah we why not win it out we are jamaica we are people who are proud we're okay. a proud nation and confident and yeah i think so i think we can win it out yeah living in jamaica i can attest to that jamaicans are very <laughs> very proud people so you spoke about um, dangerous players and, you know, instantly it came to mind. Dijon Whisper Richards, he's young, but he's captured uh, a lot of the hearts here of the football loving public in Jamaica and across the world. Because, I mean, I'm Trini, Dijon has, I have a lot of time for him. What are your thoughts, Damien, on the youngster? To be honest, um, I don't know much about him, but from what I've seen and what I've heard, um, very talented. You know, he's from the Greg Butler at Phoenix camp, so he's properly trained. Um, a warrior, I've seen him in a couple of uh, mining cup games when I was in Jamaica. I'm doing some work with Digicel. Um, he's a powerhouse, um, young, you know, so he's he's green and he wants he wants to be successful. He wants to be great, and that's awesome. Um, he's, I think... With the right um, training and the right development, he'll be a force to be reckoned with for sure, and he'll help us for many years to come at the national team level. Yeah. Um, he just has to continue to believe in himself. Um, don't listen to too much people. Um, don't get um, eaten up or like um, you know distracted by oh you're the best, you're the best. You know, always go on the pitch and prove it. Um, yeah, because sometimes, you know, football can leave you. It's football, when you get distracted and too caught up into, oh, what people are saying, even though you know you're good and you know what you can do, sometimes that get the best of you. So I just hope he stays focused and continue into a right, you know, positive trajectory and the world is, his, you know, he's is going to be great for sure. Definitely. But what's your take though? You know, should more schoolboy players be implemented into the national team setup? Where do you stand on that? All right, to be honest, when I was growing up in Jamaica, 
you would have to be like maybe top two, top three best in the whole country at the schoolboy level to get called into the national team. Even playing in the local league. Um, for me, I always have a philosophy whereby I always try to include three to five players to get experience because at the end of the day, they're not playing professional football week in, week out. So they're going to need that experience so when called upon, they can handle, per se, big man ball game. <laughs> you know, because club level, even in playing in Europe, anywhere you play, at the club level, it's not the same as international football. Interna international football is a whole different ball game. It's very difficult. It's the, tr the travel, the less time together, preparation time, the tournament football. It's it's difficult, you know. So one can say sometimes when people are dominating at the club level, you see players go at international level and sometimes struggle. But that's just football for you. That's just international football. Huh? But yeah, I mean, I always want to see young players get a chance. I never got that chance when I was younger to, you know, leave from high school and go into a national setup, um, seeing a national setup. So, yeah, I always want to see that. But if you're not ready yet, then just continue to gain experience, get into local camps, play against, like, with, you know, the other day, um, the, the national team had two games against Trinidad. That was perfect. You know, the first team wasn't there. So the guys who, you know, are in the roster pool got a chance to get some international experience and that will help them grow. So, yeah, um, youth development is very big on, in my books, for sure. Yeah, and you, you spoke about, did you say big man football? Was that the correct yeah. Well, let's talk <laughs> some big man football now, because Jamaica's <laughs> chances of qualifying for the 2026 World Cup. What do you think about your chances, given that Mexico, USA and Canada will automatically qualify? Let's be realistic. <clears throat> um, outside of those three teams, I mean, nobody has really given us any problems in the in the in the region. Mm -hmm. But again, over the years, different cycles, we've come and say, "Oh, we can do this. We will do this." And now, I, to be honest, like it's no more time for talking. We have to get the job done. It's far overdue now that we've gone to another World Cup and that we've won a Gold Cup. Um, I believe we can be top two, top three if not number one, to be honest, in CONCACAF for many years. We have the players, we have the calibre, we have a good coach now, and we have players all over Europe that are gaining experiences elsewhere and are able to bring it back to the national team. So yeah, the chances are high, but we have to get it done. We can only say, yeah, we're, we're going to get there, but if we don't, then what? We're going to have to go back to the drawing board again. It's full time now, we just get the job done on the pitch. And as players, we have to take that responsibility. Because if you watch the, the World Cup, the last World Cup, if you match our talent pool to other countries, you know, you can look at the Canada's, the um, Saudi Arabia's, you know, a lot of countries there. <laughs> to be honest, they're not, we're not far off. Yeah, I think Jamaica, when I look at you individually, of course, a force to be reckoned with. I think it just comes down now to everybody putting their strengths together, playing as a collective unit. And for sure, you all will be a force to be reckoned with, but you have to get over that individual hurdle and just work as a team. Yes, I agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah, I've been keeping a close eye though on your MLS performances with Philadelphia Union. The goals you've been scoring, it looks like you're having a good time. How has that been so far? Um, to be honest, <clears throat> you know, going into a, a new team, uh, um, especially with a player of, uh, you know, of my standards and stuff, you want to play all, all the time. Um, I really have, this season, I have a lot of box to tick. You know, I want to challenge for Defender of the Year, you know, CONCACAF Best 11, MLS Best 11, Champions League. You know, I have a lot of, to be honest, <laughs> I want to prove what I can do and show people that I can play at the, play at the highest level week in, week out. Um, last year, coming back into the MLS um, from um, the Middle East and Europe, you know, it was just a ch chance for me to get settled again and get settled with my family. I think this season is a real ultimate test for me and for me to show everyone what I'm made of. This season has been awesome for me. Um, I think I've done really well so far. I've been training at a high level week in, week out, <clears throat> day in, day out. I've been pushing myself, my health, you know, 
my my my, my sleeping routine everything has been like phenomenal for me um i've been talking with um nutritionists um like getting my massages stretching everything has been like top for me this year so far and it can show in my performances um over the past couple of games i'm really happy with where i'm at right and your team is in the east after five matches do you think you have what it takes you know based on the um component of the team um the players that you're working with to of course improve that uh, standing yeah, I mean, I think we started off well. Obviously, when you're one of the best teams, it's not the best team in the league. You're going to have really good players that represent their countries. And you can see last week we lost. We missed eight players due to international break. Yeah. We only had four guys on the bench, including a goalkeeper, five. So, And three of those guys were defenders. So it was always difficult for us. Um, the results sometimes, unfortunately, haven't been going our way. But I think we're really good. I think we're a top two team in, in the league, to be honest. Um, I think we can repeat our feet and get to the MLS Cup and win trophies this year. But again, the results speak for themselves. For themselves, we have to, I know, get points on the board this, this season if we want to be great again. Yeah, well, Damien, it's always a pleasure, you know, chatting with you. And I want to thank you so much for stopping by on Sports Maxes in case you missed it. And I'm wishing you all the best in everything that you do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, you know, it's always an honor, you know, to come on and talk with you. Um, you have always been supporting me and, you know, monitoring my career over the years and I appreciate it. Appreciate thank it. you. Take care and don't freeze yourself to death. We'll talk again. I have my blanket. <laughs> Take care. All right, viewers, that's a wrap for today's In Case You Missed It. Be sure to like, share and comment. Let me know who else you'd like to see on the show. Goodbye for now.